Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about viruses. But not really the coronavirus that's been going around, mostly because I think we've all heard enough about it. So let's discuss this other discovery coming from China that was unfortunately buried by all of the other news. Welcome to What The Math. So I'm sure most of you by now have already been kind of fed up with all of the panic and all of the news coming about the Chinese coronavirus, which is why we're not really going to talk about this at all. But just because I also like to educate people on various scientific topics, I have to tell you three major things about coronaviruses. Fact number one, we've all had coronavirus at some point in our lives. About 20% of all of the colds are very likely caused by one of the four major coronaviruses that have been going around human population uh, for quite a while now. So if you've had a cold recently, there's a 20% chance that one of these coronaviruses was responsible for it. But there are of course three more different coronaviruses that have been discovered in the last uh, two decades or so. SARS was the first one, then we had MERS, which is actually the deadliest one, and even today MERS has been responsible for at least 48 different fatalities uh, last year alone, so it is a much more dangerous virus. And so the Wuhan virus is technically the seventh discovered uh, coronavirus. But here's the thing though. Something else was discovered in China only a few weeks ago that unfortunately most of the major outlets never got to cover. And we're talking about zombie viruses. Okay, not these kinds of zombies. These kinds of zombies. The viruses and bacteria that have been buried inside ice deposits for a very, very long time. And something that we've been discovering in various ice cores as we started extracting them around the world. But most recently, in January of 2020, a very interesting paper became available coming out of a Chinese university that analyzed various ice cores coming out of Tibetan glaciers. And unfortunately, these glaciers have been slowly melting away. As a matter of fact, approximately 25% of all of the glaciers located in Tibet have actually melted since 1970s, thus freeing up a lot of water, but also a lot of things hiding in those ices. And according to the paper that just came out, and according to these Chinese scientists, some of those things are so-called zombie viruses. Now here's the most interesting part about the discovery. Out of 33 different types of viruses discovered in those samples, 29 were completely new to science. And they believe that these viruses were trapped in the ice cores, or basically in the uh, uh, glaciers, for approximately 15,000 years or so. Now all of these glaciers were part of the so-called Gulia ice cap, roughly located in this region right here, and their discovery obviously presents us with a very interesting and somewhat scary scenario. You know, what if those viruses and those bacteria that we discovered escape into the drinking water and eventually infect the population living nearby? And although maybe it does sound like a pretty far out theory and idea, interestingly it has occurred at least once back in 2016. More specifically, in Russia in uh, 2016 there was a very unusual thawing of permafrost right here in the Yamal Peninsula, which interestingly ended up releasing some of the spores of so-called anthrax. And these spores, as they were released into the herd of animals, ended up also infecting several people, and also unfortunately at least one 12 year old boy passed away after contracting this bacterium. But one thing you have to remember though, well, with anthrax, that's unfortunately how this bacteria propagates. It stays dormant inside permafrost, and then when the conditions are right, it gets released and possibly infects something. In other words, it's not really a reason for us to panic just yet because that's exactly what anthrax is supposed to do. But if you'd like to learn more about this particular story, I'm posting their article from the Scientific American down below that explains this in a little bit more detail. But the thing is, when this occurred, media kind of presented this idea of these zombie viruses and zombie pathogens that could one day possibly escape and infect us and thus cause some sort of a pandemic. And a few years ago, NASA has also discovered even older viruses up to about 50,000 years old in these deposits in a Mexican cave, further suggesting that we could one day catch something really ancient that we have no immunity for. So I guess the fear is there, and the idea of catching these zombie viruses is pretty real. And when you think about it, the idea of catching some kind of a bacteria or a virus that's been trapped in ice for hundreds or even thousands of years is pretty terrifying. Which is why I wanted to talk about another really interesting story of a very interesting person, a person that you can see right here, his name is Jonah Houghton. 
Halton went to this really unfortunate town in Alaska known as the Brevik Mission. This town is famous because it was essentially almost completely wiped out during the 1918 Spanish flu infection or pandemic. And his only goal was to try to discover if the Spanish flu was still present in the bodies of the deceased that he was able to acquire back in 1951. And Jonas' goal was scientific. He wanted to see if the bacteria was still active and deadly after about, I guess, 30 to 40 years. Now, obviously, this is not something very safe, but he was a very curious person. And because of his discoveries, later on, the scientists were able to very accurately analyze uh, the Spanish flu virus, discovering all of its genome. And that allowed us to create a vaccine for any kind of a epidemic that might happen again. But the important part of his uh, study back in 1951 is that he really tried to resurrect the virus, but it just didn't work. None of the viruses were viable anymore. None of them actually were able to create any new infections in any of the cells that he tried to use. And thus, this was um, a pretty interesting discovery. So these ancient viruses, these really old viruses, might not even be dangerous to us anymore. In other words, what he discovered is that the zombie viruses and zombie bacteria might actually not be dangerous after all. Similar and yet, I guess, somewhat dangerous studies were done with smallpox, a very deadly virus as well. And none of these smallpox bacteria that infected people um, hundreds of years ago were active either. None of them could be reactivated after uh, decades and hundreds of years in the ground. And what this implies is that, for the most part, it seems that these zombie viruses and zombie bacteria are no longer able to infect anyone. Although I do have to kind of say this with a bit of caution because some scientists studying those viruses or those bacteria have potentially been infected by something similar. But the interesting or I guess the funny part is that they were infected by the actual samples that they were studying. So here is where we come to a very ironic truth and discovery about all of this. It seems that the people that are most at risk from these zombie viruses and bacteria are the curious people trying to study them. In other words, the scientists studying these viruses have to be the ones taking the most precaution. In other words, scientists trying to study these ice cores have to take a lot more precaution. And I'm not saying they shouldn't really do this. I'm not saying it's dangerous if they continuously try to dig out these samples. Because discovering these viruses and these bacteria that could be hiding is important. We have to be ready for anything. But they definitely have to establish better techniques and better uh, precautionary measures for us to, well, essentially not end up with another coronavirus on our hands. Luckily for us, the study that I mentioned in the beginning does provide us with really good guidelines and they even established a new interesting technique on how to try to discover these viruses and bacteria without contaminating the samples or, I guess, in some sense yourself. So this particular study was really well done. Unfortunately, like I said, it was released right as the coronavirus outbreak began. So most people, including people in China, have never heard of this study and will probably not hear about it for a while. But I thought it was a pretty interesting discovery because finding so many new viruses and discovering so many new uh, different pathogens that existed a long time ago will actually help us understand our own evolution and most importantly, help us understand if any of these viruses have interacted with humans or our ancestors before and how this might have affected us as well. Now, there's going to be another video on viruses coming out relatively soon where I'm going to explain why it's actually really important for us to study viruses and understand them. And just to give you a slight spoiler, it has to do with our genome, because our genome is very mysterious and contains viruses. But you're going to learn more about this in one of the future videos. On that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Most importantly, don't panic about coronavirus. Just take the regular precautions that you normally would and get your flu shot, because that's also really important. Once all of this kind of goes away, we'll come back and talk more about different viruses and different biological discoveries as well. But if you've enjoyed this video and if you like learning about sciences and space sciences, make sure to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about various sciences in general, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And fun fact about coronaviruses, this is what we actually refer to as corona. This is why they're called coronaviruses, because of this unusual crown-like receptors on the surface of the virus. So stay healthy, make sure to wash your hands, possibly wear gloves if you want to prevent any kind of infection, and, well, that's it.